Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which is a bit of a kit update. It's more than just an unboxing video. There's a few bits and pieces I've picked up recently, both at the recent Trench event and some bits and pieces which have arrived in the post as well. So I thought I'd make a little update video which combines all these bits and pieces together. Without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at what's arrived. The first little batch of stuff we have here is the bits and pieces I've picked up at the, the Trench event, which obviously covered in a, a previous video. Uh, we have various bits and pieces here. We have a set of original D-shaped mess tins. Bought these off, off Ramsey, who's appeared on the channel previously. Thank you very much again for these, Ramsey. Uh, lovely, lovely condition overall. Uh, they need a little bit of fettling because the, the lid does come off. I have had this off, but it's very, very tight. And it's because there's a, a section here that's been slightly distorted in the top of the large mess tin, the lower half. So that needs just a small amount of fettling so you can actually get this off uh, without too much struggle. So set of original D-shaped mess tins in, let's say, very nice condition there. Very happy with those. Didn't have an original set previously, so it's nice to have those. This was bought from uh, Tom, one of our section, uh, who, were there, who was there at the weekend, has some bits and pieces to move on. A, a Gibbs shaving soap tube. And that does have shaving soap in here, but it's gonna have to be cleaned out because it's a bit, uh, yeah, it's no longer a shaving stick you can actually get at. So that needs uh, cleaning out, but uh, rather a nice to have a Gibbs uh, shaving soap uh, tin. And then a, uh, we have here a, a single edge safety razor. I've forgotten off the top of my head which uh, mark this is. Oh, it's an Ever-Ready. There we go. Look in there. Uh, come on, focus. There we go. British made. And then actually made in England on the back there as well. Uh, Ramsey was saying he does have some blades for this, so this will be, rather than the straight razor, this might well be the one I take with me on future events, such as the trench event, or that time period. Although the double-edged safety razors, which I'm quite familiar with, I've made videos looking at those previously, they do exist prior to the Great War. This is still perhaps something a little bit more typical of the time period, uh, and certainly something that had been around a little bit longer. So, perhaps for an older soldier, uh, as I will become eventually, uh, whereas I am becoming, uh, this would be a little bit more appropriate, as I say, a lot, rather than using a straight razor, which I'm not yet confident with. So, single edge safety razor there. And the final bit that came, well, not quite the final bit, we'll get onto that in a moment, is uh, this money belt, uh, the, the penultimate item, is this money belt here, which is rather nice. It has a little, little pocket in there, as you can see. A little uh, stud and leather flap there. Chrome fittings, which is rather nice. I'm not quite sure on the, the era of that. There is a number here, but it's a little difficult to make out. A sharp and then a number there. But just a nice thing, and it does fit me. Uh, thankfully, I'm a, still a, a, a somewhat skinny, so uh, it does fit me in the waist, which is rather nice. It's nice to have an original example. I had pondered buying a repro at some point, but that is a nice thing to have. Um, and as I say, none of these bits and pieces were were expensive. Uh, Tom was very reasonable with his prices, so as was Ramsey with the mess tins. So uh, there we go, that's the bits and pieces picked up at the, the trench. The final thing to talk about is actually the blanket underneath. I'll just move these things to one side. Different background colour today because I also picked this up from Tom. It's a US Army blanket. It's quite heavily worn, it's been repaired in places, and there are some moth holes in it. Now, the reason for purchasing this is quite specific. The chindits were provided with US Army blankets which they cut in half to cut down on the weight they were having to carry. So as this is so heavily worn and they're mothing to one edge over in that direction, uh, I will probably end up cutting this in half for use as part of my shindit kit. Uh, as I say, because of the condition it's in, I'm not overly precious about doing that. If it were pristine, I wouldn't be doing that obviously, but it's quite heavily worn. It's been repaired in places and as I say, it's mothed on one side. So it makes that nice, easy decision of, of which side to use uh, and just keep the other side for, you know, use in displays and things like that. So the blanket, as I say, is also part of the bits and pieces I picked up. We'll move on now and have a look at some of the bits which have arrived in the post. Continuing the US theme, well, sort of the US theme. Uh, this is certainly going to be used for, for US and Australian uh, reenacting, uh, is a, an Arvin pack. And this is from Paul Thiemann, who I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Paul very kindly uh, sent this over to me, um, saw it available on Facebook, and uh, he sent me this. I say, very nice condition, a uh, few repairs and things to it, but I've been after an Arvin pack for a little while. Uh, they were, of course, used by the 
uh, US uh, US forces to a degree as well, uh, though that you know depends on the specific unit. And you do occasionally see them used by uh, ANZAC forces over in Vietnam as well. So it's useful from that point of view too. The main body of the pack and everything is there. The back has actually had a reproduction X frame fitted from a, a reproduction well, it's a, a reproduction tropical rucksack X frame and uh, hip pad there. So that's not original, but that's not a problem to me. I was happy with this and uh, it's, it's a nice addition to the collection from that point of view. It serves my purposes basically. So that arrived, which is a nice addition to the collection, as I say. The other thing Paul sent me is this sort of odd bit of web equipment. I believe this is Danish, from what Paul was saying, and it's essentially supposed to be for a poncho or similar. It's, it's the equivalent of the, the cape carrier for British 1958 pattern web equipment, although it doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, conform to that design at all. Obviously, you have belt loops with lifted up fastness on the back and on the front here, lifted off fasteners for the main opening. It's made of this plasticky rubberized material. As you can see there, it's a cloth reinforced plastic material, basically vinyl, I'm assuming. And as I say, Paul very kindly threw that in as well. Uh, I believe the equipment it comes from is somewhat inspired by British practice, which is probably why he included it. Uh, I'm not sure it's something I'll pick up any more components of going forward uh, because of the size of the collection and trying to keep things on a, on a focused line but nevertheless Paul very interesting so thank you for sending this over uh, but I'm not sure if I'll build up the rest of the equipment that this goes with I'll probably find a use for it though at, at least so thank you very much indeed for that and genuinely continuing the US theme here we have a selection of bits and pieces sent to me by Brian Murphy from the US thank you very much indeed Brian for sending these over we have a collection of various bits of US kit here starting in the middle of a bit that I'm not entirely sure is US issue, and uh, these plain green M1 helmet covers, which seem to be a little bit of a mystery uh, in terms of who was issued these. Um, they are the same pattern as the US vinyl leaf covers in terms of manufacture, and you can actually see this is a short um, flap example that's had to have slits put in to allow the bales of the helmet to fit through. You can actually see that on the side here. And obviously it has the sewn in foliage slits and so forth that you'd expect from a US helmet cover. It certainly appears that Canada used these and they, they painted, uh, covered in a previous Mannequin of the Month video, I think, uh, the Queen's Own Rifles going on a UN deployment and they'd actually painted a blobby camouflage effect on plain green covers. So they were used, certainly in Canada, whether they're of US origin or not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think there's any evidence out there of this particular type of helmet cover in use by US forces. I've had a scout around and, and there are various photographs and things on forums and so forth which are debatable. So it's a point of it's a point of uh, contention I guess. So it's, a, so it's a point that's not entirely cleared up basically as who used these plain green helmet covers but it's an interesting thing to have so thank you very much for sending that over Brian. It's good to have another one of these and one that's actually slit for use is, is good to have as well and as I say with the short flap uh, pattern that you see on earlier US helmet covers. We also have here a, a flashlight, and this is a, a post-Vietnam War era example, 1970s era. I think they removed the, the foliage guards from each side of the switch there. So there's slightly uh, a slight change to the, sorry, flip that over, slight change to the uh, the number as well, if I remember correctly. And this is interesting. It has sort of a diffuser lens fitted into the front of the, the flashlight there. So if I unscrew the cover, this allows you to fit the separate lenses here, the, the, the outer bit. You've got this diffuser lens. I guess you could call it that. Um, whether it's supposed to, to focus the light, I don't know, but it looks more like it would diffuse it. I've not uh, had a batteries in this yet to, to see if it works and, and have a look what the effect of that lens is. But anyway, US flashlight there. So good to have a, a post-Vietnam era example of one of those. I do have a Vietnam era example. And another a US canteen. And the really nice thing, of course, is it has a, an example of the black uh, MBC cap or CBRN cap, which allows you to obviously attach the drinking tube of the US M17A, I forget which one had the drinking tube added, was it the A1? I forget off the top of my head, but anyway, the US respirator that had the drink drinking tube attached to it, this is the valve that allows you to drink whilst wearing your respirator by using that tube that obviously is part of the respirator design. So really nice to have that with the, the, the specific design of cap there to allow it to be used with the respirator. So. Very nice to have one of those in the collection with, with the cap included. 
We then have a couple of uh, ammunition pouches here, a, uh, an Alice example, so we've got that there, uh, nice clean Alice clips and everything on the back, so that's nice to have. They're actually surprisingly well, not difficult to find over here, but for what they are, they're quite uh, quite expensive, so it's not something that I've really gone out of my way to collect, so it's nice to have a, an example of the Alice pouches there. I only need to pick up one now, which is, which is great. And then another second pattern, M1956 ammunition pouch, very useful to have these, and it's in really, really nice condition. Uh, as you can see there, no corrosion or anything. I open up the flap, I remember the stamp under the flap is very, very clear as well. You can see there it is. So that's really, really nice to have one in, in such good condition. All of the ones I have at present, both first and second pattern are slightly worn, or somewhat worn. So uh, nice to have those. I'm not gonna try and do that looking through the camera. I'm just gonna put that back down there. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and do the quick release fastening. So that's the, the main bulk of what's arrived. We also have this little card over here which is the uh, first US Army Commandments of Operational Security. And I'll, you can pause here and uh, read that should you wish to. It's quite humorous, but obviously very useful as well. A little bit more on the back there. And as I say, you can pause here should you wish to read that. So thank you very much again, Brian, for sending these bits and pieces over. And that's everything that's arrived recently or that I've picked up recently. And I say I thought altogether it made a rather interesting video, or hopefully it has done anyway. So there we are. So as I say, just a quick update there from bits and pieces which have arrived recently and I thought it was worth making a video looking at these. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.